Look around in Vermont, everywhere, in the cities, in the villages, and in the countryside, you will see historic buildings, the most visible reminders of our past. This presentation will introduce some of the historic building styles popular in Vermont during the last 200 years. When most Euro-American settlers came to Vermont, beginning in the 1760s, the first houses they built were typically rough cabins made of logs. These cabins are usually small and have few windows, and unlike the one pictured here, most now have their log walls covered over by other materials. Many settlers, however, soon began building small wooden frame houses. These early wood frame houses are typically one and one half stories high with gable roofs, a nearly central doorway, a large central chimney, and almost no decoration. More stylish early houses were built in the federal style, popular from 1790 to about 1835. Most are two or two and one half stories tall and have a central doorway. Often on each side of the door are narrow windows called side lights and curved windows above the door called fan lights. Sometimes there is a fancy second floor window known as a Palladian window, made up of a central arched window flanked by two smaller side windows. Sometimes there are fan lights on the end of the house in the gable of the roof. The federal style was also used for churches, such as this one with fan lights and a Palladian window. There are also federal style stores and other federal style buildings in many villages. By the 1830s, Vermont was well settled with almost 500,000 inhabitants. From this time until after the Civil War, many buildings were built in the Greek Revival style, inspired by ancient Greek temples. Greek Revival style buildings have gable roofs. Most of these gable roofs face the street and have their ends connected in a triangle across the front to create what is called a pediment. Greek Revival style door decoration is usually rectangular with side lights and what are called pilasters, which are flat boards on each side of the door that imitate columns. Smaller one and one half story Greek Revival style houses were also built. This one has a typical Greek Revival doorway and pilasters on the corners of the building. Across the front of some fancy Greek Revival buildings are porches with two-story high columns known as monumental porticos. The Vermont State House has a monumental portico with columns and a pediment on top. The Greek Revival style was also used for churches, other public buildings such as this school and town office, and for stores like this one. The Gothic Revival style, inspired by churches in Europe, was used in Vermont about the same time as the Greek Revival style, but was not nearly as common. Gothic Revival houses usually have steep, pointed gables and sometimes pointed ornaments on the roof. There are often pointed arches or pointed trim over the windows, and many houses have what are called barge boards, the carved trim that drips like icicles off the edges of the roof. The Gothic Revival style was also popular for churches. This one has pointed arches and pointed pinnacles on top. In the middle of the 1800s, the railroad came to Vermont and changed lifestyles and the landscape forever. With the railroad came a new style, the Italianate style inspired by country houses in Italy and popular in Vermont from the 1850s to the 1880s. Many Italianate style houses are two stories tall and cube-shaped with brackets everywhere. 
bay windows are common, as well as porches held up by square columns with flattened corners like these called chamfered columns. Arched windows are also sometimes used. Fancy houses often have a small room up on the roof that has windows on all sides. This is called a belvedere, which means beautiful view in Italian. The style was also used for more modest houses, such as this one, with an Italianate porch with chamfered columns and brackets. Many Italianate style commercial buildings were built in Vermont's larger towns and cities. Italianate style stores can also be found in some of the smallest villages. A style very similar to the Italianate is the French Second Empire style, popular in Vermont in the 1860s and 1870s, and modeled after a style then popular in France. Second Empire style buildings have a distinctive roof shape called a mansard, but otherwise look like Italianate style buildings with brackets and bay windows and porches with chamfered columns. Besides houses, the French Second Empire style was also popular for public buildings, such as this train station. By the 1880s and 1890s, Vermont had in many ways become a modern place with a number of busy cities. The drama and color of life during these years is seen in Queen Anne style houses, often painted with several different colors to draw attention to all their details. Walls are often covered in shingles cut in fancy shapes. A corner tower with a pointed roof was popular, as were gable screens up in the peak of gables. But the most common Queen Anne style feature is the porch with its decorative turn posts and decorative railings between the posts. Both of these houses have Queen Anne style porches, gable screens, and walls with fancy shingles. Other buildings built in the Queen Anne style include churches, public buildings such as this fire station, and stores like this village store with a Queen Anne style porch and fancy shingles in the gable. In the 20th century, electricity came to much of Vermont and trolleys and automobiles made it easy to travel between the country and the cities. During this time of rapid change, the most popular style looked back to America's colonial past for inspiration, using details from earlier historic styles, including the Federal and Greek Revival styles. The colonial revival style is most commonly seen on buildings built between 1900 and the Second World War, and even after. Almost every colonial revival style house has a porch with classical columns. Palladian windows are also sometimes used, and many colonial revival homes use this distinctive roof shape called a gambrel. Gambrel roofs are used for large mansions, such as this one, as well as smaller houses, like this one. This modest colonial revival style house has the usual porch with classical columns and a fanlight in the gable pediment. Many public buildings were also built in the colonial revival style, such as this brick town hall with columns in the doorway and a large Palladian window. From the 1920s on, belfries on top of colonial revival public buildings were also popular. Another popular historic 20th century style is the bungalow, named after houses with deep porches in India. American bungalows also have deep porches and are usually small houses. Porch columns are often battered, wider at the bottom than they are at the top. Exposed roof rafters and sometimes open brackets supporting the roof can be seen on bungalow-style buildings. Although used primarily for homes, bungalow styling was also used for other buildings, such as this 1920s gas station with exposed roof rafters 
and battered porch columns. Beyond these historic styles, of course, the actual world of historic buildings is more complex. Some historic buildings will be a combination of styles, such as this house with Gothic Revival steep gables and many Greek Revival style details, or this Queen Anne style house with a Colonial Revival porch. Many buildings have small additions from many styles from different periods, such as this early brick house built about 1810. About 1890, its owners added a new Queen Anne style porch, and then, probably in the 1920s, other owners added the Colonial Revival gambrel roof dormer window. Many buildings, however, are very simple and only have one or two details from a historic style, such as this stone house with a federal style doorway, or this house built with a simple Queen Anne style porch. And then there are many other buildings, such as this 19th century barn, that do not have details of any historic building style. Now when you go outside and look around, you may see many things you never noticed before. Old buildings are everywhere. Some may be from Vermont's early days, built in the federal style, or Greek revival style, or Gothic revival style. Others may have been built after the Civil War in the Italianate style, French Second Empire style, or Queen Anne style. And still others may date from the 20th century and be Colonial Revival style, or a bungalow. Together, these buildings tell the story of Vermont's history, and preserving them is one way to preserve our heritage and help keep Vermont a special place to work and live.